Morning, Angie. Um, you are a remarkable person because CAMFED sent you to school and now you're their chief executive. So many, many congratulations. Fantastic. Thank you. I think you're going to ask me some questions. I'm going to ask you some questions. Yep. So uh, I'll start, Minister. Um, there are no questions about FCDO's commitment to girls' education and investment to it. Uh, it would be great for us to know why did you prioritize it and how has it been so far? What are some of the achievements? Well, I don't think you can understand international development unless you see it through the eyes of girls and women. And, you know, the answer and the cure for poverty isn't money, it's education. So I have always uh, understood, since I first got involved in international development, um, something like 20 years ago, that unless you see it through the eyes of girls yeah. and women, you're, you're not on the right page. And one of the things I've been most impressed by since I've returned to government after a 10-year uh, gap um, is that within the British Foreign Office, there is an absolute understanding about, firstly, the importance of girls' education, mm -hmm. and secondly, that embedding in all the things we do the interests of girls and women is absolutely fundamental. Awesome, that's, that's fantastic. I like what you said about seeing it through the eyes of the girl, that's critical. I'm going to bring an issue that a lot of people find very confusing, and you have been very vocal on this, and I love that. And this is, what has climate change got to do with girls' education, or what has girls' education got to do with climate change? In, in Africa, for example, I remember when I first went to Darfur, I saw the effects of climate change in terms of people being able to graze their cattle or grow their crops. And it's led to people being displaced, a lot of migration. And earlier this year, I was at a school in uh, Niger where there were no uh, proper facilities for girls and women. And that was caused by climate change and displacement. And so there is a direct link in terms of the impact of climate change uh, in terms of people not being able to go to school uh, where they live, having to move, and the importance of providing uh, new facilities in those circumstances. So the link between climate change and girls' education is, is very clear. It's many faceted, yeah. but that's one of the key areas in which you see it. Yeah, incredible. And I love your position paper on climate change and girls' education. And that's something that I think those who haven't read it should go to because it makes it very, very clear. And just a final thing, what should we look forward to from the FCDO in terms of girls' education? A complete commitment. We are determined that uh, we will help ensure that every girl has the opportunity for 12 uh, years of quality education. We understand that there are many ways of changing the world, but if you want to change the world, for me, it's you educate girls, because if you educate girls, they will educate their own children, they will get married later, mm. they're likely to be economically active, and uh, they will uh, then have a stronger position in the family and the community, and then, as we saw before the fall in Afghanistan, even in yeah. uh, national government. And you are such a wonderful uh, role model for showing just that. And uh, having you as the CEO of CAMFED underlines why, and I'm not just saying this because you're yeah. here, why right. CAMFED, CAMFED has always been, since I yeah. first got to know it in Cambridge, yeah. uh, when Cambridge took CAMFED to mm. its heart, um, mm. why CAMFED is so important and so brilliant. Awesome. I, I know that way too well, as you say. And as we say at Comfort, you know, educated girl and everything changes. Not some of the things, but everything. So. Which is wonderful. Now, I am going to ask you a few things now, because I'm aware sure. that Comfort's been uh, supporting girls' education for something like 30 years uh, yeah. now. Um, I wonder whether you could just tell me mm. about your journey through CAMFED, because, you know, you've been part of that journey really from the beginning. Sure. Um, I always want to start this with making it clear that I'm one of the few survivors of a system stacked against girls. And I say that not lightly, because, as you know, Minister, up to 95% of 
of the most marginalized girls in sub-Saharan Africa never go to secondary school. So I'm one of the few survivors who made it. And I made it through as a result of a lot of support. One of them was that at the very point when I was about to drop out of school, that's when Comfit was just being introduced into my community. And I got the financial and material support that I needed to stay in school. So here I am now. And it's tribute to all the support that I got from my community, from Comfit, from timely investment, and, and all of that. That is, that is fantastic. So from, in terms of us as mm. the British Foreign Office, you know, in terms of the investment we make, the work that we do, from where you sit, what do you see as the results of that work and investment? One of the things that I love about FCDO is it's not just talk. There is this actual investment in, in girls' education. So just the very fact that actually up to 600,000 of the girls in the comfort program that have completed school did so because of support that we received through FCDO. So that's, for me, is, is the most tangible thing. You're not just talking about get girls to school, it's important. The FCDO has invested resources into actual breathing, talking, real human beings. Girls like myself, and that's, that's critical, that's significant. I think that's the most important thing. But also besides that, the fact that you continue to convene you know, an opportunity for various partners, be it research partners, other investment partners, they work through GPE to continue to support education matters. Because it also means the system within which girls are being supported is also fit for purpose as girls go through school. So it's been incredible to work with the FCDO. I'm not even going to talk about all the other E's, like, you know, the empowerment of women, the, you know, safeguarding and child protection that comes with it and all of that. But it's incredible. And how many girls in the last 30 years uh, do you think CAMFED has been responsible for supporting their education? We've supported over 6 million children and actually 1.8 million of them have been through secondary school because that's where the challenge is. Like I said earlier on, up to 95% of the most marginalised girls never get to complete secondary school. And that's one thing that we've done. And besides that, there's one thing that I always want to share, you know, our most powerful product, but also the agency, the people that drive the Comfort organization now. That's our Comfort Association. This is an alumni network of young women educated through Comfort who are now volunteering as girls' education advocates. And it's a quarter of a million women who are investing in education in their communities. And on average, each of them individually, financially supports the education of three other girls. So we're talking about the multiplier earlier. This is how to guarantee the next generation can go to school. And so looking to the future, yeah. what is your message to the international community, to the donor world, to all those of us who care about girls' education? Not just about yeah. what Britain does through the work yeah. and investment in the Foreign Office, but to the global community. What is your message? The most important thing is to continue to keep uh, girls' education at the centre. It's not a might-do, it's not a side thing, it's central and core. And I like one of the things that FCDO talks about, where you talk about, it's about fighting for a planet, it's fighting for a girl. So those two things matter as we go forward. And girls' education remains central to it, to all the sustainable development goals, to all that... It means for Africa. So we've got young women who are transitioning into leadership. We've got communities that are transforming because their girls, you know, have been enabled to go to school. So continue to invest real money into girls' education and its agent is now. So let's support more. Let's support them now. And let's support them better. So we are a partnership. The British taxpayer, yeah. what we want to see from Britain, CAMFED, you and your drive as the CEO, and together we must make sure that we do exactly what you've just said. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And I'll leave you with some Swahili. In Kanfed we say pamoja, tunaweza, which means together we can. Thank you. Thank you.